On the last episode of Crime and Punishment, we examined the criminal mind. Now, we take a step further. How do we combat crime? What measures do we take to effectively fight crime? Or, how effective are these measures? We all hold a personal responsibility as citizens to avoid becoming another statistics of this senseless crime, either as a victim or perpetrator. However, the sole responsibility of fighting crime rests squarely on the shoulders of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Commissioner Gary Griffith, good day. And how are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Good day to you. Thank you for allowing us into your space to conduct this interview, and we are very grateful. Indeed, my pleasure. Now, tell us, I know it's a very simple answer, but for the public's knowledge, what are the roles and function of a police officer? A police officer, as, as police officers around the world, they are their servants. They are there to look after the well-being of the citizens of a country. Um, they are there to enforce the law. But as I, said, as I stated, a police officer, you, people look at police, uh, policing sometimes as just being the hard and fast aspect of all of the difficult things that you'll have in a society and the police must be there to be involved in roadblocks and patrols. It is much more than that. To be a police officer, it is the most noble of all professions. And the reason I state this is because a police officer is willing to put his life on the line on a daily basis for a stranger. He's willing to put his life on the line for his country or her country. And that, again, that is why it is the most noble of all professions. People would not like it. It is a very difficult job, thankless, um, the, the, what a police officer would do. But every day, a police officer is, based, he is committed to doing what is required to serve his country and to ensure that democracy um, prevails and that the law would be enforced whilst also making sure and remembering that he is a servant and an employee to all citizens of our country. And as the head of the uh, police service, what are your roles and functions? As a leader, but as a leader, uh, a leader is also supposed to, uh, you, you serve to lead. Um, it is to ensure that that element of a, of a police service can, can operate as best as they can be with, with the resources available and that they do what is required. As the commissioner of police, I have two, I have two persons I serve. Um, I serve the citizens of the country, who will be my bosses, but I also serve the, the police officers, so it's a very thin line. I have to make sure that both bodies believe that I am doing what is required. You shift too much to try to look after only the concerns of citizens. The police officers will not feel that you have their back. Yes. If it is that you do too much to protect police officers, the citizens will feel that you're not doing what is required to serve them. So it is a very thin line. Uh, my job, obviously, was to ensure that crime would be reduced as much as possible. And the most fundamental right of any citizen can be adhered to. And that fundamental right is that of safety and security. It is your right to live. It is your right to be protected. So it is an, an enormous task. If there's an incident, I will, I feel it. Uh, you know, it's sometimes like a, 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 a tiny um, paper cut. Yes. And you get these paper cuts every single day. It will burn you. Mm -hmm. and. If it is that you trivialize it or you ignore it, then you, you, you've totally lost the focus of what you're there for. So as the Commissioner of Police, my job is to continue to do what is best to improve the police service to be the best that they can be, to ensure that the rights of citizens, their most fundamental right can be adhered to, which is that of safety and security. Now, as Commissioner of Police, what are the key uh, initiatives that has been implemented under your tenure? Um, to reform or to address the concerns of the police service? Yeah, about 250 odd. Every year, <laughs> there's been about 100. Um, every three to four days, there's a, a, a new policy, a new str uh, strategy that we have implemented. So what I will do is, is give policies. I put a lot of emphasis on, on, on aspects such as good leadership, good management, measurement of performance, and accountability. When you put those four principles in place, you start looking at the policies that are required to improve the police service. So we, what we have seen now is um, systems now to improve um, accountability of police officers, um, systems to ensure that there's better management, that we can be more effective and efficient with the resources that we have, making sure that, um, that our police officers can be, be properly trained 
and they can improve the system. So we can, we have, we can look at technology, new units, um, um, systems that we have now, just as what we see right here, an operational command center. Before, you will always have systems where persons will not, they will make calls and no, and no one will answer. So they, we have done a lot to try to improve the standard of the police service, get the citizens to buy into the fact. And we would have seen it, we would have seen it. Um, you know, people look at polls and they, they try to ignore it. But a survey of the police service on an annual basis, is, it is critical because mm -hmm. <clears throat> we can boast that last year was the largest number, um, the greatest reduction in crime in 35 years in this country. Every major crime was reduced. It has never been reduced to the point that it, that it was. But that could only be of value if it is that the citizens believe that we're in the right direction. The good thing is that several years ago, there was just about a 14% support and belief in the Toronto Tobago Police Service. Now it has gone to over 55%, which means that for every two persons in this country, arguably, one person is comfortable that the police service is in the right direction based on the policies, the strategies that we have done to improve our performance, make us more accountable, and the training that we have done. And again, the systems that we have put so many things as it pertains to technology, DNA testing, um, the new units, um, equipment, training, and with all of that, we have made the Toronto Tobago Police Service much better than it was before. Every day, we communicate through stories. Stories of ourselves, our challenges, our goals, our experiences, and our aspirations. Storytelling is an art, an art that we have mastered. WESN Film Studios comprises a collaborative team of experts with extensive industry experience locally, regionally, and internationally. The ability of your business to successfully communicate with your preferred audience depends on the strength of the stories you tell. Your vision should be communicated in a high quality, professional, and creative way. From concept to post-production, advertising to film, multi-camera productions, live events, streaming and virtual conferencing, we are WESN Film Studio. Let your own unique voice be heard and your vision realized. Call us today at 628-5835 for your next production. Stuck at home again because of COVID restrictions? No dining? Grab and go? No problem! Head on over to Richard's Liquor Cellar at 15 Union Park West Gopal Lands Marabella for access to a wide range of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Richard's Liquor Cellar even caters to your seafood needs with fresh lobster, fish and shrimp available regularly. Call us at 334-7111 or follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Richard's Liquor Cellar to be part of our all amazing pop-up sales. This time, don't get stuck high and dry, get your stock at Richard's Liquor Cellar. Please observe all recommended protocols. A reminder from WESN, we urge you to protect yourself and others from the spread of COVID-19. Stay safe by taking some simple precautions. Clean your hands often, use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. Practice social distancing, stay six feet apart. Wear your mask. Don't touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Cover your nose and mouth with your bent elbow or a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Stay at home. If you have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention. Following the above can help us all to help each other.
We are WESN, the premier platform for Caribbean content. WESN, covering West, East, South and North. WESN, we entertainment, sports and news. WESN, available on Green Dot 7, Amplia 118, Airlink 17, B-Mobile 107, Digicel 21 and Flow 110. Connect with us at WESNCC or stream online at www.wesncc.com. WESN, your premier platform for Caribbean content. Prior to my tour of duty and when I became Commissioner of Police, I looked at all of the different um, problems. One obviously had to do with persons not believing that they were comfortable when they report matters of a sensitive nature. We found out situations where a woman would be raped and she would go in a police station and the officer will tell her she's improperly dressed. We have situations where many women will be abused, battered, um, sexually um, abused and they will have to remain in a police station waiting room for 24 hours, couldn't take a shower. We have situations where a woman will, will come to report her, um, that her husband had beaten her and the police officer would actually label, it might look like she's now at fault for whatever she did. So I had to do a massive transformation in the police service, trying to change 9,000 police officers to understand the sensitive nature of domestic violence. It would have been impossible. So what we did is to form a specific unit to deal with this type of crime. And that is where we formed the gender-based violence unit. What we did now is that it ensured that persons, when they come to report such crimes, it will not be trivialized. There will be officers who are properly trained to extract the information, ensure that there's a, deg a degree of sensitivity, a high degree of confidentiality, and making sure that the victim does not have to go through another uh, more trauma after what she just experienced. For years, we ignored um, what was known as um, restraining orders and so forth. So all of these things now, we have virtually a 100% um, uh, confidence approval by persons who have um, liaised with the gender-based violence unit. And that has played a very big part towards causing more people to come forward. We were told that there's going to be an increase in reports. And I thought, well, if there's an increase in reports, it means that we're doing something wrong. No. What it meant is that more women now understood and felt confident that I can now start to come forward and report it and not be concerned that a police officer will trivialize it, um, treat me as if I am, I am the, the criminal, or even send it back to the person who, reported, who, who I am reporting it to. And we have also put systems in certain police stations to ensure specific rooms for persons who have, been, uh, who have endured sexual, uh, sexual crime or domestic violence, and making sure that that person can be treated as um, quickly and as professionally as possible. People will always find the glass half empty, especially in this country. People automatically try to find an excuse not to, to say that we, we are doing something good. And when I say we, I don't mean the police service alone, I mean the country. Look at data from crime statistics. There, there's about, about a 30 to 35 percent reduction in every violent crime in this country. Never before we saw something like that. People automatically try to find an excuse not to, to say that we, we are doing something good. And when I say we, I don't mean the police service alone, I mean the country. And they say it is because of COVID. But then again, when you look, there have been many countries, especially North America, where because of COVID, there's been a massive escalation in crime. Jamaica and other Caribbean countries as well. So to state that COVID has been a factor that has reduced crime, if it is, you really analyze it carefully. With, with something like a, a worldwide pandemic, that will cause um, persons losing their jobs, increase unemployment. Un unemployment means that there'll be a factor of loss of money. Um, loss of money and unemployment can cause inflation and with all of these things, it is a catalyst towards crime increasing because of robberies and so forth. Apart from crime reduction, you have to look at polls to ascertain whether the public is confident that we are in the, the right direction. Uh, there have been national polls yes. done, uh, and every, um, especially on myself. It was 65, then it reached to 72, 78. The latest has now been an 82% national support rating. If I can switch and get the police service to get what the support that I have in the public, I will switch um, like this, mm -hmm. because it is more important for the police service to have that national support than myself. Commissioner, let's go back in time a bit. Now, in December 2018, you would have made a particular comment, statement um, about your one shot, one, one, shot kill. one kill stance. How do you feel about the public perception with respect to that statement? The vast majority understand. Just before my tour of duty, we reached a point where in, in Chagornas, 
there was an um, exchange of gunfire by criminal elements. And for three to four hours, po our police officers could not go there. And the reason they could not go there is because they did not know if it is that they will be supported, if they will be protected. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. A firearm is, it has been made as a, a, an item to kill. And if criminal elements have those, have those to tools and they're trying to kill a citizen mm -hmm. or kill a police officer, you have to neutralize the enemy. You have to neutralize the opponent. It is kill or be killed. 20 years ago, the biggest concern we may probably have was trying to get the update. police to be called because your cat stuck in a tree or trying to cross an old lady across the road. It is no longer this case. It is a war zone out there and people need to face reality. The only way you, can, you cannot be in a war zone and not fight a war. Correct. It is a war against criminals. Mm -hmm. We have a situation now where the, the many criminal elements have assault rifles that you will use in counter-terrorist activities or um, counter-revolutionary warfare. Yeah. And they have hand grenades. It is a war zone out there. You cannot fight a war with kid gloves. I made it an, a known fact that on my watch, no criminal element has any access or control to any block, any corner, any community, any area in this country that they felt belonged to them. I had to take back this country. We had a country to defend. And the only way you can do that is to fight fire with fire. If a police officer is not trained and understand that that's what they need to do to ensure the person is neutralized, then that police officer would be killed or the citizens who he is trying to protect would be killed. And that is the concept of one shot, one kill. It is not a, of going out there to just kill someone. And obviously, it's a human being. It is nothing that you want to do. But if it is someone is trying to kill you, it is your right to defend yourself. I had to ensure that my police officers understood that I am there to support them if they do the right thing and the lawful thing. Never before in the history of this country have police officers been so trained into understanding the minimum use of force before a police officer will have to go straight from verbal persuasion straight to the firearm because he did not have options. We have been training each and every police officer to understand the minimum use of force policy which will minimize persons being fatally wounded by making sure they are properly trained, but by also providing them with the tools that they never had before. And we are seeing that because yeah. you've seen with now with the advent of social media and everything is camera. Yes. We've seen a lot of times where police officers have been exercising patience. So there's the patience, there's the tolerance, to. there's the verbal persuasion, then there are radios that are not being provided for the police for backup because you'll have someone who's being aggressive and a police officer because they believe it's one officer. But when that officer will call several others, that numerical superiority will cause a situation to um, diminish. In contrast to the perception <clears throat> that I am going very aggressive, just the opposite. I am providing all the tools, the training, the equipment for every police officer to have the minimum use of force. However, if an individual goes to the point of having a firearm to aim at any of my officers, the officer has full right to draw his firearm and to aim an accurate shot to neutralize the enemy. The purpose of the show is to look at everyday issues that we may be struggling with. I am your favorite neighborhood psychologist, Sule Joseph. Women think that they, they well, they see something good and in, in, in the mix of other things that they're seeing that right. are toxic and think they can hold on to that good and they can expand on that good. We have the fathers being absent and the mothers really doing this Herculean task to try to be a mother and a father, but at the same time, in this overcompensation, you find yourself setting up your, your sons for failure. And I think the conversation needs to shift a bit from saving women to, well, not shift necessarily, but it also <laughs> needs to include educating our men and boys. It's Psyched, Thursdays at 11 a.m., right here on WESN. I am Rondell Donower, attorney at law and host of Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. Strictly Legal is a legal program geared towards informing you, the public, of your legal rights, responsibilities and remedies. So be viewing Thursdays 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. But you are the driving force of this program. We will be able to take your concerns to the various agencies to have them resolved for you. You cannot get through on that NIB line, you know, you're telling you. 
you, they have the line in, but you're calling and you're holding on and you're holding on. We have spoken to them up to this morning up there at the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex about your matter. It is engaging the attention. They're saying a thorough investigation has been done. Although they have spoken to WASA despite their many reports to the authority, WASA, you're not doing anything further. We have a beautiful water supply. It's oh, it's good company. now. Yes, yeah, true, you share and you help us. I'm very glad that all is worked out and thank I'm you for letting so us know. I'm so grateful and thankful because of all years that we complained. It's Madam Fix It with Sharon Farfan. Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 11.30 to 12 noon, right here on WESN. Seven is out. All day is in. WESN News on the hour. A reminder from WESN, we urge you to protect yourself and others from the spread of COVID-19. Stay safe by taking some simple precautions. Clean your hands often, use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. Practice social distancing, stay six feet apart. Wear your mask, don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth. Cover your nose and mouth with your bent elbow or a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Stay at home. If you have a fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention. Following the above can help us all to help each other. Gift giving during a lockdown can still be hassle-free with a gift from FanZone with delivery options available nationwide. Visit and browse our Facebook and Instagram pages for all your official licensed merchandise and apparel and have it delivered to your door. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. FanZone, we've got you covered. Do you foresee, in light of all that you're stating, do you foresee that there will be a cease and desist among the criminal elements in Trinidad and Tobago? They do not want a war with the police service. They do not want a war with Gary Griffith. It is a war they would lose. We are stronger, we are fitter, we have numerical superiority, better trained, and they would lose. What we have been doing is bullying ourselves into a war between criminal elements where gangs have been killing each other and gangs have been involved in, especially um, gangs and uh, criminal elements, in trying to abuse their, their, their strength and their weapons that they have by, by killing persons, kidnapping individuals, raping people. And with that, the police, we have to bully ourselves into this war zone by telling them, hey, back off. If you don't stop, we are going to get involved. As I said, crime is big business. Mm -hmm. There have been businessmen, police officers, criminal elements. Politicians. Who make us possible, <laughs> who, make, who make a lot of big money through criminal enterprise. Yeah. <laughs> and, be, and because of that, uh, the, obviously, I have stepped on many tools. Um, the, as I said, 82% of the public support me, 18%. They may have reasons not to because of my, my style, but many of the, the majority of that 18% would be persons who do not benefit from what I do. There's a saying, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yes. Do you, do you identify with that statement? Not at all. I think, yeah. you know, people underestimate the maturity of, of this great country. People believe that we, we talk about this as, as only in Trinidad and, and all of that. When you look at the maturity we have of this country, the vast majority of the country are the law-abiding citizens and they fully understand what we do and what I do. The few who would criticize, mm. they have nothing better to do because some of them have never done anything of substance in their lives. The country has matured and the, the public is aware of the problem that is taking place in, in, around the world. Let us look at how police services have operated with other citizens in other countries. Clashes, confrontations, shootings, mm. killings of citizens and police officers. Since this COVID pandemic, we, do, we did not have one confrontation. It shows the maturity and the train of our police officers, but it also shows the maturity of citizens who respect and understand the police service. Yes, there will be um, certain situations. No police service is perfect. So you'll have rude police officers. You will have officers where that will make mistakes. I would make mistakes. Citizens would make mistakes. We need to learn from these mistakes and build ourselves to be a better police service, better citizens to make it a better country. And one of the things that would, has always been a concern around the world with police services is abuse of authority. 
What we have done now in the last two years, over 200 police officers have been suspended or are charged for criminal offenses. I've been pushing the envelope that if a, a police officer commits violent crime, such as murder, rape, kidnapping, they should be fired on them being charged because they have put the police service into disrepute. Um, I am trying to make amendments under the State Liability Act that when police officers have abused their authority and someone sues the state, the police officer in some way should be culpable. Yes. Um, I am pushing polygraph testing, drug testing, transferring officers if I believe they're involved through intelligence in criminal activity. All of these things have, has, has caused a, a massive injection of increased trust and belief in the police service. And by that happening, it means that we are in the right direction. And there would be police officers that will continue to make mistakes, but the more we put systems to measure their performance and make them accountable, the less situations we will have of this. And that will mean an increase yet again of citizens buying into the fact that, hey, they are not perfect, but they're doing a job to protect me and let me give them a chance. Every decision made in life, there'll be pros and cons. So I can make all the boasts of the massive reduction in crime last year. It means nothing if citizens do not actually believe that the police service is doing their job. If citizens start believing that police will abuse their authority, then all the crime reduction will be very, uh, will be irrelevant unless it is we know that the citizens are starting to buy into the fact that we are in the right direction. That confidence and trust of the public into a police service, it is critical. Without that public confidence and trust, it means that we would have failed. Where do you see the police service in the next five years? Continue to improve and continue to do what is required to provide the most fundamental right for citizens of this great country, which is that of safety and security. It is your right to live and no one must have, feel that they have that authority to do what is required that can infringe on your rights. It is a very thin line, but the more we improve the police service, I intend to ensure that the Toronto Tobago Police Service would arguably be number one police service in the Caribbean. What is your vision for Trinidad and Tobago? Unification. This country, for far too long, we continue to be divided by race, by politics, by religion, by your financial status. Too often, we, we have seen the glass half empty. Let us start to take away the negativity, the bitterness, the anger, the hatred between all, all of us. Let us turn that now to hope, to belief, to trust. And by do, having those words of positivity, it will make this a better country. And hopefully five years from now, there would not be a need for somebody with my style, but there is that need now because of criminal elements. I do not know what the future holds with Gary Griffith. What I can assure you is that everything I do, I, I have a chain of command. My chain of command is my God, the, my country, and the citizens of this country. I will serve all, and I'll do it with the best of my ability and within the law. We are WESN, the premier platform for Caribbean content. WESN, covering West, East, South and North. WESN, we entertainment, sports and news. WESN, available on Green Dot 7, Amplia 118, Airlink 17, B-Mobile 107, Digicel 21 and Flow 110. Connect with us at WESNCC or stream online at www.wesncc.com. WESN, your premier platform for Caribbean content.